Well, good morning. It is Monday, August 31st. I want to wish you God's blessings once again. I pray that you had a blessed weekend, uh, that you were able to worship our Lord and our Savior. We know that that's not just a one-time thing on the weekend. I pray that you get to do it today and throughout this week as well, as we begin in his name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, in the late afternoon, I had the opportunity to preside over my niece's wedding. Um, her and her husband were married yesterday afternoon. They said their I wills. I know when I was younger, it was mainly I do, but uh, these days we kind of go with the I will uh, when we go through the vows. And in fact, they said I will on more than one occasion. Uh, and it was uh, a great reminder to all of us that in that short little sentence, uh, such a simple sentence, I will, is actually uh, really a loaded sentence when you think about it. I will is a promise. It's, a, it's something that speaks to the future, not just now, but to the future. I will speaks encouragement. I will really speaks um, not only promise, but uh, hope. And I love the just the whole concept of the saying, I will. And the reason I really love it the most is because of what I shared uh, with them uh, during the ceremony. Uh, when we think about the promise, the encouragement, the hope that comes with those words, I will, uh, we then are thrown into scripture once again at the many, many, many places where God says those words to us as his people. In fact, if you go back to Genesis 17, you'll hear uh, the Lord saying, I will, you will be my people and I will be your God. That's not just then, that's forever. It goes all the way into the future and with God, the future has no end. Uh, and then of course, there are plenty of other places throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament where God reminds us he will fight for us. He will, uh, he will encourage us. He will uh, protect us. He will guide us. Um, there's so many different I wills that come from the great I am himself. Um, the one I want to reflect on this morning, though, uh, comes from Exodus chapter 14. And this is a place where the Israelites now, they have uh, fled from Egypt and, and Moses and, and the people, the children of God, are now right at the Red Sea and they're stuck. Pharaoh is coming up behind them with his army. Uh, they know it's happening. They are trying to figure out where do we go from here? The Red Sea is in their way. It's this obstacle, if you will, a huge obstacle, one that uh, for them, how in the world are you going to overcome that? It wasn't like they carried along boats and ships with them through the desert. And of course, they are so distraught that they cry out to Moses and they're like, hey, were there not enough graves in Egypt for us to just die there. I mean, you had to bring us out here to die. We didn't even want to come. We would have rather stayed and remained enslaved, serve the Egyptians. They say those things. Um, in the midst of that, though, God responds through Moses. And here are the words. And with that huge obstacle in their way, with them not being able to see any way out, with the Egyptian army quickly approaching, which seemed to be a very hopeless situation for them, in Exodus chapter uh, 14, at verse 14, this is what Moses conveys. This is the message of God. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I will fight for you, says the Lord. Just be still. I've told you many, many times, that's one of the struggles in my life. I see an obstacle and it's hard for me to just be still. It's hard for me to go, okay, Lord, I know you got this. I, I say it all the time and I know he does, but even then, when I face something, it's like, how? How is this going to pan out? But these would be great words for us today and throughout the week, that no matter what we face this week, no matter what we're facing in our lives, no matter how big, how small the obstacles may be, whatever it is, hear the words of the Lord, the words that he spoke long ago to the Israelites and the words that he then fulfilled in and through Jesus Christ, the great I am in the flesh, the promiser of all those great I wills, the giver of true hope. Hear these words again, that I will fight for you, says the Lord. 
just be still. Let's pray that we're able to do that, to be still and let God be the one who fights for us. Let's go to him in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great I am. You are the one who has revealed yourself to us in the flesh. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for that, especially as we go into this work, uh, this week, this work week. We ask that uh, you would be with all of us, no matter what obstacles we're facing in our lives, whether they be spiritual battles or emotional battles or physical battles. Uh, Lord Jesus, I just ask that you allow us, uh, really just work in and through us with your Holy Spirit to be still and let you fight for us. There is no greater one that can do that than you. And I would ask that you be with all the teachers, all of the students who return to school, whether it be uh, preschool or grade school, high school, or even college. Lord, I ask that you protect them, uh, help them to understand how important it is, and all of us alike, to be still and let you be God, because you are the one who fights us our protector, our shield, our fortress. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. We'll go throughout this week and let God be the one who fights for you. God's blessings.